Hey everybody, welcome back to day two of the Hunter Burton Memorial Open. I'm Tanner Grace. I'm joined by Jeff Foster. Jeff, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. We had eight great rounds of Magic yesterday. We had one undefeated. That's one player that we'll be watching in our first feature match today. Before we get into that, you know, we've got a lot going on here today, a lot going on this weekend, tons of tournaments. We've got this main event for the Magic event. We've been talking about all the great uh, causes it's been doing, but these players are actually playing for something this weekend as well. And we haven't actually done too much coverage of the prize support. Let's go ahead and pull it up on the screen. I think Anu's got that ready for us. And if you take a look, they're playing for a decent little bit of cash here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody told me that they're playing for RC Dallas invites. That's actually really cool too, right? You get to play for the hometown uh, RC as well. And then you get the uh, the custom D6. We talked about this a lot. David Palmer, one of the other casters with us here. That's his favorite part of this. He wants he wants the swag, every one of these, because he's been to every single one. He's got them all displayed in his house. He's really proud of them. You got that the play mats and stuff, too, which I've got one of the play mats, by the way. I, I took care of one yesterday. Oh, yeah. Ooh, they're nice. I haven't gotten mine yet. This is my first uh, 100 Ooh, in the real nice. Yeah, Mine as well. I'm, I've been really excited to be out here. It's been awesome. These players have been amazing. We've seen some great magic, and... Just top notch all the way around. It's been utterly just amazing this entire weekend. But first place playing for two grand, second place, 1500. So nice couple extra bucks in your pocket here if you make these finals. But then also, I'd be pretty excited to walk away with two grand. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, wait, or are you not getting paid? Are, are you? This is this is for charity. Yeah, no. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. <laughs> We're all volunteers here. Jokes aside, but the players are going to be playing for a little bit of cash here. Top four is going to get those RC invites along with some extra swag from the Hunter Burton Memorial Open here. As you see, we're playing modern here this weekend. We are on Sunday, so we're going to have five more rounds of Swiss today, and then we're going to get into that nitty-gritty top eight. Especially going to be playing single elimination in the top eight to crown a champion. They're all going to get their names in the trophy, but one's going to mean just a little bit more than the other ones because they're going to be... Yeah, I'd be really excited to be the, the tenth champion of the Hunter Burton Memorial. Yeah, it's a nice round number, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you're not number seven, which is great, or six, or whatever, but you're like, hi, oh, I was the 10th anniversary, because they've made this one, like, a little extra special and stuff, so yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's super exciting. It, it's also it's also kind of cool that the 10th anniversary is also the 10th event. Mm -hmm. um, usually, usually the 10th anniversary is the 11th event. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it usually works out that way. So. Yeah. But, um, so, so we're going to be getting down to the feature match as soon as possible. I know that we're going to be watching D'Anthony Davis yet again, who was our only 8-0 player from day one. In fact, look, there he is right there. And oh, thankfully, we talked about this yesterday. We got Mason on the right side. I wanted to see the other tattoo that he had. He has a great Majora's mask tattoo yep. on one arm. And this one is, is uh, remind me of this game. I, I It's Borderlands. He almost yeah. said Fallout. Yeah, it's yeah, Borderlands. It's, it's yeah. very similar to Fallout, you, right, That's why, yeah. I was like, my brain couldn't figure out which one it is. But I wanted to draw more attention to Mason's shirt. The 03 drop shirt. Oh, yeah. Not a very good shirt for this weekend for him. Yeah, because he hasn't lost a match. <laughs> He can be wearing 03 shirts and pacing the entire tournament. Right. I think he's wearing it ironically. Yeah, definitely. And he's got a really, really cool take on a new deck here this weekend. Uh, he's got Asmo food. It's got a breakout in it, which is really cool because it helps put Asmo into play and does a lot of really cool stuff. Also, this is kind of a blast from the past deck. He's got Termogoyf in his deck and stuff too. I saw that when I was looking at the deck list. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm very excited to see a Termogoyf mm -hmm. on the battlefield in modern. I have not seen one of those in a very it's long time. It's been a while. And uh, speaking of good creatures, we got a turn one Ragavan for Mason here. The Anthony Davis is gonna get checked right away on, do you have a bolt? Do you have a way to deal with this? And with him fetching this quickly and getting the fourth land type, there, there might be a ley line here at least. Something. <laughs> yeah. It looks like Ren and Six. This this is one of the reasons that uh you know you've seen some people step away from stuff like Ragavan in the format a little bit, just because when Ren and Six is so prevalent, it's such a beating when you're on the draw to have this happen. Yeah. Ren and Six is such a clean answer to mm -hmm. uh to, to Ragavan too, because mm -hmm. you you use your turn, you kill the Ragavan, and now you still have this Renin Six on the battlefield with a fetch land in the graveyard. Like D'Anthony is showing why he is 8 0 in this tournament. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've, we've watched, I think that's about the third or fourth time we've watched him here this weekend. And every single one of the matches, mm -hmm. the opponents have had good questions. Like they've been playing their good cards, and yeah. D'Anthony's always been at the ready with the perfect answers. And I mean, it looks like Mason has this perfect answer in the Pithing Needle, though. Yeah, this needle's going to shut down this Renin Six quite a bit. So, we'll see if D'Anthony hopefully wasn't leaning on this Renin Six for his case too much. Well, he's got lands in his hands. So he could play these big, expensive spells he's got in his deck, but just trying to see what he's got. Yeah, just trying to make sure that he gets enough mountains in play. Gonna try to get one of those dwarven mines on turn four. Maybe you have a creativity as soon as then. 
Yeah, I I mean I love I love this creativity deck. I don't know if you uh if we ever played against each other in like in, in Legacy, but I really liked Natural Order and Legacy. Yeah, you were the enemy. I, I was yeah, you were the enemy. enemy. And, and you know what? I was trying to De stop natural order. D'Anthony is doing the exact same thing. Yeah. He's putting one thing onto the battlefield, turning it into something. Can you big. deal with this big thing? And yeah. usually the answer is no. Exactly. And like <laughs> I would love if he was putting a Traxa onto the battlefield myself because I love green creatures. Right. Uh, but Archon of Cruelty is what he's going to be looking for in this deck. Yeah, he's got three Archons main. Big fan of that card. Absolutely Very love good. it. Speaking of good cards, we got a Fable, the Mirror Breaker on turn three from the Ebony. Just absolute perfect card. Is that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if you've known this, but since its inception in paper, it has won all of the Pro Tours. How many formats has it been banned in? Uh, I think it's only one right now, or is it more? I know it's standard. It was, yeah, it was, it was definitely banned in standard. Yeah. You put me on the spot here early in the morning. I haven't had my coffee yet. Right. I've had too much coffee. Today. I, yeah, I was just want to say. All right, second Arnstruct made for Mason here as well. So is that Artifact Army is growing. There are three threes as of now. About to be four fours. Yep, there's a cookbook. So a pair of four fours. And I've got to say this. You know, when I, whenever I hear someone talk about their Asmo food deck, mm -hmm. There's always that part of back in my brain that's like, this is a little bit of a meme, right? Yeah, you know, this is a fringe deck, a tier two, maybe or whatever. And I have been really impressed with this deck for Mason here this week. It's, I mean, it's it, it's pretty it's pretty crazy, like how well all of the pieces fit together. When you look at it and you're like, each individual card, like he just pitched an oval chase daredevil, and the first time I had an over uh, an oval chase daredevil put into the graveyard against me, I had to read it. I had no idea what that card did. Um, and, and then they do the thing and you're like, oh, 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 oh this is just squee for you. <laughs> yeah, this is like, really good. Okay, this card is squee. That's fine. Um, but yeah, you, you have the, uh, you have the Urza saga to fetch up the, the, the cookbook, uh, which kind of, which kind of gets you going. He's also got the two constructs on the battlefield. Like this is really just, it's just an artifact deck. Mm -hmm. It just happens to have, uh, as Morano, Marduka Dyson, a cool car in it. That was really impressive, by the way. <laughs> it just, just out of nowhere, just casually drops the full name. Wow. It's, okay. it's like the whole reason I wanted to cast this match. To be oh, I see. I see. <laughs> I got set up. Yeah. All right. The Anthony going to go ahead and put up the second chapter on Fable and Mirror Breaker. Do a little bit of looting here. Let's Which, see. I, I mean, I, oh God, every mode on this card is just insane. Uh, like just being able, being able to to refill. Bad cards in your grip, and now we have uh, we have to fairy time raveler. Yeah, absolutely, a lot of really good targets here. You could take one of the car instructs out if you really wanted to. You could bounce even the pithy needle here to unlock your red and six. But I think yeah, I was gonna say D'Anthony's a little worried about that life total being at nine. Yeah, I don't think bouncing the pithy needle. I mean, we're not going to be doing much with that red and six this turn. What are we dealing one damage to a uh, was it a four five five construct? Right. I don't think that's where we want to be. Yeah, it's just better so, you know, D'Anthony has a hand if he wanted to maybe get that, uh, unlock another land drop, but it looks mm -hmm. like he has another land in his hand here, so no creativity just yet, no Dwarven Mind to make a token, but D'Anthony uh, has targets if he has a creativity. He could do it as, for as much as two next turn, yeah. or maybe even three if he finds the, uh, if, if he finds the right cards. D'Anthony has got a pretty full grip. It looks like, from what I can see, there are a few lands in it, uh, so not exactly where he wants to be, especially after, after, after pitching two cards to the, uh, so the fable of the mirror breaker uh yeah it looks like we're we're coming back to to mason's turn can you see what uh what is in his hand uh it's a little hard one of the cards either rack or what at foothills can't tell <laughs> <laughs> Do we have the ability to uh, to pull up their hands, the hand cameras? I know we have hand cams but it might okay. be you have, you have to get it at the right time sometimes he has the hand fanned out sometimes he doesn't and then maybe our floor spotter might be in the way. So I, I think that's a stomping ground. I so. think that was the card you thought was Ragavan. Yep. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was either Ragavan or it was that version of stomping ground. Right. This is one of the hardest parts of my job, Jeff, is to keep up with <laughs> the 17th different art of stomping ground. <laughs> I, uh, I will say I do enjoy being behind the camera for that specific reason. Yep. <laughs> uh, Misty Rainforest and Breeding Pool look exactly the same very often. Right, there's an Inti for Mason here, and it's going to something's going to be let, met with a ley line binding here. Before combat, yeah, Inti with uh, Inti with cookbook is uh, is a little scary. Uh, it's going to be able to power power Mason through these turns. Uh, if he's if his hands looking like garbage, it's just it's basically it's rummage and get a uh, get a food token every turn. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it starts to accrue too much value, right? Like you're going to be able to put a plus one plus encounter and give a creature trample. You're going to be able to 
rummage, you're going to be able to put the top card of your deck into the exile zone and maybe cast it this turn as well. So you're getting some card advantage, you're getting board advantage. It, it's kind of... All of these things do great stuff separately, but when you put it all together, it makes a powerful deck. Yeah, and we were talking before about that uh, Oval Chase Daredevil. Uh, rummaging does not feel like rummaging when you can put the card immediately back into your hand. Yeah, this, is, this actually is it's using it for value. And I love the combination of Inti with the cookbook and all these other things because you're just getting value on value on value, and you need to kind of do that to keep up with the Anthony's deck because the Anthony's deck generates tons and tons of value right before it kills you with some big, you know, spell like creativity. Right. Um, and we're like, we're, we're looking at this board state and D'Anthony has the reflection of Kiki Jiki now, but it's, it's kind of, kind of just a vanilla tutu. We've got a gray ogre on the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the original days of magic here. Yeah. Gray ogre just chilling because there's nothing to copy just yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, it won't be able to this turn anyway because of some sickness. But if a creature does come into play for D'Anthony and he gets to copy it, it's going to be really bad for Mason because the likelihood of it being an Archon is pretty high. And there could be an Archon on the battlefield at any at any time. That's what's kind of weird about these kind of board states because we see D'Anthony. There's you know there's two Planeswalkers. There's a reflection of Kiki Jiki. One of them's shut down. You uh, but like Mason's board looks unassuming, but that that Inti can just. Can just take over at any time oh absolutely uh all right we've got a dwarven mine coming into play here which makes a goblin token we've got a bolt targeting the nt mm -hmm. nt is going to do its thing before the bolt resolves here cookbook going to put an oval chase daredevil into the yard make some more food mason is hungry this morning we've got three food already on his side of the board yeah so that uh that, that 12 life not exactly 12 life yeah virtual 20 ish Assuming Mason actually isn't choked on mana the entire game, which it it's looking like he's using all of his mana without having to crack any food. So <laughs> absolutely love this play from D'Anthony here. Uh, second to Fairy to replace the first one is going to pick up his own Leyline Binding here that had taken care of one of the Karnstrucks. So nothing mm -hmm. comes back when he bounces his hand and he gets the draw card too for good measure. Taking a look at D'Anthony's hand here, I think that's a Dwarven Mine, the Red White Surveil Land, and yes. that Leyline that we were talking about. So. So yeah, with with that empty hand, uh, I mean, it, the the Teferi seems like it's it's doing its job. I, do you think that it may have been correct to pick up that reflection of Kiki Jiki to be able to get rid of uh, to get rid of those those lands that are in his hand? That's actually a really really good point. It matters what D'Anthony's worried about with his life total being at nine. Maybe he's trying to be a little bit more safe and make sure that he has an answer to a next big threat for Mason. Like if he gets an Asmo in play, it's really hard for him to win from here. So I think that's what he's doing is he's thinking about worst case scenario. If Asmo gets to play with this many food, even Archon might not be enough to get him through the game. So he's trying to extend it there. I don't hate the idea of picking up the fable there though. So yeah, last he, turn, last turn I was, uh, when, when he, uh, when he flipped the card to Inti, we couldn't see what it was because of the glare, but I don't know if you know this, there's a Tarmogoyf on the battlefield in modern in 2024. Yeah. Nice little blast from the past. You know, the more I think about it, I think it's just the better and safer play to pick up the, the ley line there because Mason did have mana open. You saw that he did have a bolt in his hand. And if you put the Teferi and try to pick up the reflection of Kiki Jiki and he bolts it in response. Immediately dead. Yeah, you might just die. On the spot. Yeah. It might be just too big of a risk to take. If if Mason was tapped out, then he has no mana up, then it's it's a different it's a different story. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this creativity deck is like I said before, he's he now looks pretty far behind, but with that with that uh the the dwarven mine token at any time that could that could be an archon of cruelty yeah and they, the game just completely flips yeah i was gonna say we're that's all we're looking for for d'anthony here is either ways to get through his deck draw more cards cards or to find the card creativity and as soon as that happens mason's gonna be in a world of hurt if he doesn't find asmo he has yeah. built up a lot of food here so if he gets an asmo to play he can at least kill off an archon yeah, looking at uh, looking at D'Anthony's main deck, it does not really look like he has much of a way to deal with Mason's uh, Mason's game plan aside from the leyline bindings, uh, and I, he also has prismatic ending. But um, there's no graveyard interaction. He's really just trying to get Mason dead as quick as possible. So Mason basically can do whatever he wants with those old chase daredevils and uh, the graveyard strategy, and it. It kind of it looks like this game is getting away from D'Anthony very quickly. Yep, a little bit of chump on the first turn off there using the dwarf and mine token. Still got that ley line in his hand if he wants to use it. it looks like he does. He's gonna take care of one of the turn mm -hmm. Uh And uh, I'm trying to figure out how big the the turn are. It looks like there's uh, an instant creature land 
uh, and uh, enchantment. Yeah, there's an enchantment because of Urza Saga. I don't yep. know if we have an artifact just yet. I think all of them have stayed in play for Mason. And I don't know if a Planeswalker has hit the graveyard yet. Uh, no. No, there is. There is. There is. There is a Planeswalker in D'Anthony Davis' is a graveyard. He's the second the, the Teferi second in play. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's very important. These, uh, these Tarmogoyfs are five sixes. Mm. Uh, and I don't know if, uh, I don't know how good you are at math, but. Uh, oh, I'm four, terrible. Four terrible. into nine, much different than five into nine. Yeah, just, just absolutely terrible. Especially if it, if, it, if it has to go more than the fingers that I have, I'm, I'm, I, I got no shot. I mean, I, I feel like I'm surprisingly good at math for someone who wants to be playing natural order in, in formats. <laughs> so one plus one equals progenitus. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Well, it, uh, progenitus? I mean, we natural order for progenitus. progenitus oh, come on. Probably 10 years. We got a Turbogoyf in play. We're going to talk about what, what happened 10 years ago. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Turbogoyf, this is a Turbogoyf that's attacking with an NT trigger on it, too. So this has got... A plus one plus one counter, and it has trample, so the dwarven mind token not going to be able to chump too well this turn. No, it's not. I mean, this is this this is a two turn clock even yeah. with blockers at this point. Yeah, so the idea just kind of laid it out there. I think it is still just five because the enchantment planeswalker instant creature land. I don't think anyone has played a sorcery just yet. Oh, value off of a spell pierce here is quite Ooh. nice. Still a little wry smile from D'Anthony here. You you never really you never really see a spell pierce work out on uh, what is this turn ten? Yeah, I was gonna say turn ten. Yeah, yeah, this late into a game, but Mason, thankfully for him, hasn't drawn a lot of lands this game. You know, while well, Anthony has. Well, uh, you say thankfully, but uh, if if uh, like in Mason's seat. I have four mana. I don't actually care if my thing gets spell pierced. Mm -hmm. I'm drawing a, multiple cards off of my overchase. They will chase daredevils. That's a hard card to say. Uh, it's a mouthful for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm drawing multiple cards off of those a turn. If one of my spells gets spell pierced, I, I don't think I care. Yeah, but a bolt was picked up by D'Anthony Davis here and not a moment too soon. It's going to be able to take care of the Inti uh, that is in play right now. And he's going to find a mountain off the top. D'Anthony left with just a land in his hand here. He's going to have to find some action soon, or he's going to fall in game one. Our only undefeated player left. Well, technically undefeated. He's the only 8-0 player right. in the field. He's, I'm sure he's lost a couple of game ones. Yeah. This, I mean, I, this deck doesn't look, seem like a deck that really loses too many game ones, but uh, he's got to lost a couple. Uh, while we're here, let's see what we've got in the sideboard for this deck there are two endurances um so that could that could help with the with the oval chase daredevil, daredevil but i don't oh are, are we reading so this is um i'm trying to remember the name but it's a two one for one green yep. it's when you play an artifact uh i think it gets like a plus one plus one counter and you gain you gain a life i was gonna say yeah, this is the uh it's it's a plus one plus one counter if it's the first time that it has uh if that the ability has resolved uh, so let's see. Uh, it is Teething Wormlet. There we go. That is the name of that card. Uh, can maybe we, we can. Can we put that one on screen? Yeah, maybe we can bring that one up for everybody because this one's a uh, this is a sweet one that you haven't maybe seen too much. There you go. It has Death Touch if you have three or more artifacts, so it does have Death Touch. And then when the artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life, and it's the first time you get the plus one plus one counter. So you get you get the life every time. If it's the first time you get the plus one plus one counter, right. and there's three of them, you get Death Touch. Yeah, notably not Trample. Uh, just Death Touch, which it, is which is fine. Inti does a good job of giving a trample, but we're already through a couple copies of that card, so there might not be more left over for Mason. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's okay, D'Anthony. You don't have to feel bad about uh, about being a reader. I'm sure we got a few readers in the audience. We got a few readers on the couch for this. Card. Yeah, I was gonna say, look, the only reason I even knew what this card did is I played the the heck out of that uh, limited format. All right, we're up to ten food. I don't know if I've ever seen ten food before, even though the days of like. The Oko food decks in modern with Urza. There we go. And we scoop it up to Asmorana Marta Dice and a cool the car. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would concede to that too. The fact that you could just like just run that whole name off is really impressive to me. But yeah, with 10 food in play, Asmo in play, you have no chance to ever win combat for the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah you're just actually really dead. dead. Archon's never attacking or anything like that. So that's going to be game one over to our red green. What would you want to name this? Is it the red green food, red green Asmo deck? Uh, I, 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 the deck list says Asmo food. There we go. It's Asmo so food. I think that's, I think that's yeah. what we go with. Right? It says uh, Asmo food up there in the top right of uh, all good enough for me. screen. Yeah, good enough for me. The Anthony down a game here, trying to keep pace of this entire tournament. He's a full round ahead of everybody with the only player with eight wins. If he loses this, he comes back to the pack of a ton of players with seven. Got a lot of seven zero one seven one players here this weekend. But like I said, the only one 
with that perfect day one. And I think this is, is this a mulligan to five Ugh. from the end of the year? Look, we saw him do this yesterday, mulligan to five, and have no problems winning from there. Uh, okay, I mean, there is a creativity in there, and then we have uh, a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Along with a Lightning Bolt and two lands. Well, it's a pretty decent five, if I may say so. It, it, it's got its entire game plan in there, yep. actually. Uh, we just need a little bit more mana, but uh, the Goblin token can create that mana for him. So I, I'm, I'm interested to see how this goes. Uh, let's see. Looking in the sideboard, uh, it looks like D'Anthony has a couple wear and tear. Uh, Besage you. Uh, let's see. There's there's a turn to turn to or turn the earth uh, to exile those oval chase daredevils, but I don't think that's the game plan that we're necessarily be. Yeah, that here. is exactly how, like what axie he wants to fight on. Is he gonna like play for the board? Is he going to try to stop these little recursive value right. engines that Mason has? It just depends on how much he wants to be able to take out of his deck because technically D'Anthony is a quote unquote combo deck. And you don't want to dilute your deck too much of too many sideboard cards because then you take away the consistency of your deck. That bolt is going to pay a lot of extra dividends here early. We're taking care of that NT, exactly what the Anthony needed. And he's going to go ahead and get a surveil here, maybe make sure he gets that third land if he hasn't found it yet for that fable, the mirror breaker in his hand. Because if he gets that in play, like you were saying, we might see a very early creativity. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it, D'Anthony really wants to be on his game plan the whole time, but. Oh, we'll no. Say Looks like a whiff it. on the third land, Jeff. Oh, no. That's the worst thing that could happen. Uh, I, w I was going to say, it. how good does it feel to uh, to, to wear tear a uh, an Urza Saga? Oh, Just have you ever done, ever seen someone do it as early as turn one or turn two no, in this format? It's yeah. so good. The, the old one mana stone rain. It feels feels really good. It it feels like uh, it's something I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, stifling a fetch land on turn one. I've done that a few times I've in my day. I've done that a few times. Yeah. I'm a big, big fan. You can um very good. Yeah, you, you can kind of replicate it in uh modern right now. So I saw a Rhinos player who had a gemstone cavern and on turn two their opponent fetched and he had the, the tide binder to to hit the land. Ooh, that that's a lot more mana than stifle though. Yeah. It's still really I've seen, a lot. I've seen a lot of uh, of of uh tide binded fetch lands though. Feels very good to do. Oh, we've got we've got a Tarmogoyf on the battlefield again. Let's see how big that is. I think this one we got planeswalker land instant creatures. This one already is a four or five. Huge. Yeah, that's Tur a big boy. This is the Termogoyce I remember. They were just always four or fives. Yeah, every single time. Uh, but I mean, that was that was back when you were when you're getting up to four or five by uh, by casting Car Fire, not putting a, a fairy in the graveyard. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, and there there is the wear tear that we saw. I no surprise that that card came in. Yeah, go ahead and take care of that cookbook. One food brought though, we did have the over, over chase daredevil. And then we've got a prismatic ending here to take care of that turbo glyph as well. It's oh. uh, the the bad thing about D'Anthony constantly missing these land drops is that he's got no way to win this game. However, he keeps drawing spells that, that answer Mason's threat. So that's the big thing is is Mason passed one of the turns and didn't have a threat, and then he finally drew an NT to have something, and then the other was ready with the bolt here, so if he's missing lands, at least he's doing that now. Here's a decent one. He, with a strike at Rich, he now has a third band. So if he misses his third land drop yet again, he's going to be able to play this Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is going to put a token into play that if Mason doesn't answer, if it gets to attack, the Anthony is going to be able to use creativity to put Archon into play. Yeah. Oh, but a little ahead of that, Mason gets an Asmo into play. It gets a what into play? An Asmorana, Mardika Dyson, a cool car. Yeah, he gets one of those. He gets this. that. He gets that into play. <laughs> And with two food already set up, he's ready to to shoot down an Archon. The problem is he's going to lose his Asmo in that uh, exchange if he doesn't have another creature in play. So this game just got really, really interesting. And uh, one thing that I want to note that that Strike It Rich uh, probably not a card most people know. It is also only one of in D'Anthony's deck. Um, I mean, so it costs one to play. You get a treasure token. It costs three to flashback, and then you get a second treasure token. That's basically faithful slitting. Yeah, it's basically faithful slitting, and those tokens get to put get to put to good use in D'Anthony's deck. There if you know go. that creativity would be huge here now. Oh, the third land was found. Okay, so this is really good for D'Anthony because we'll say there's going to be an answer for the goblin token here. Two food get thrown at it from from what? From Asmorana, Mardika, Dyson, Akul, Dakar. That's, okay, that's, cool. that's the last time I'm last on one. To come I've run out. Yeah, you have, you have run out. I only get four. Uh, similar to how uh, Mason had run out of food. But uh, now with the second cookbook. Nice segue. Nice segue. <laughs> I'm good at this. I'm like, just, just somebody. That was, a prof yeah, that was a professional segue. I like that. You yeah. kind of showed me up a little bit this morning. <laughs> Usually it's me behind the scenes yelling at some of you. 
these cool things. I'm used to getting yelled at. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, with the second fo- with the second cookbook, uh, we've got two foods. Uh, it doesn't look like D'Anthony's plan of using creatures to cast that creativity are going to work out too well, well, but we do have treasures. So what he's doing here is since there's two food in play already, so he's putting uh, the Dwarven Mind token to play, he's putting another treasure token into play. Next turn, what he's going to be able to do is... You know, if he if he if he still has a treasure left over, multiple targets, he's going to be able to creativity for more than just one. So if the target can't be killed in response, and you can't kill both of the archons if it were to resolve, right? So and it's going to put Mason into a really hard spot. Yeah, one archon is bad enough. Two is insane. Yeah, uh, Mason can handle one. Mason can deal with one. The second one is going to be the problem. Uh, but I mean, it's it's looking like he's having to he's having to use these treasures to deal with threats, and like he wants to deal with Asmo, but he had to deal with Inti instead. So I like I I still don't know. Like you said, Mason has ways to deal with one Archon, uh, but one Archon may be all that. D'Anthony can muster. Well, so he has a treasure here. So what he can do, and he has the land. It doesn't matter anyway. So he's going to be able to target more than one thing here. So he's targeting the, both the tokens here. He's targeting the treasure token and the goblin token. So what's going to happen here is Oval Chase Daredevil is going to go to the graveyard, make another food, yeah. reveal one of these cards. So Asmo could, you know, kill one of these targets in response. Yeah. Or this, be able to kill both the targets here in response now, actually. This entire, yeah, this, this entire, is huge. This entire part of the turn is basically scripted. Yeah. So this is huge. So D'Anthony's going to get zero Archons here, actually. Okay, so he's going to kill that. Now, the he's going to get one, actually, because he targeted the treasure token. So, so the land was huge here. So this is going to come into play. So unless he's unless he's changed it, it's just Archon. So he has the extra t- uh, targets in the sideboard. But but, but Asmo is going to be well, able to deal with this Archon, right? Well, if you get two more food in play. So he's going to be able to, to sacrifice the NT, then he's going to be able to wash, rinse, and repeat and do all this again. But this way, D'Anthony at least gets the NT off the board, so some of the card advantage goes away. Right. He's going to gain a little bit of life, gain an extra card into his hand here. He's at least making headway in this game. He's not just super far behind Mason anymore. It's still an uphill battle, though. It feels really bad having to resolve multiple creativities to be able to win when you only have four in your deck. Yeah. It's going to be rough, too, because the Archons are going to go to the graveyard. You're going to run out of stuff. I wonder if D'Anthony brought in an extra target here in this match. Uh, let's see. Let's see what he has. He does have Terastodon. Uh, okay. He has Terastodon, uh, and then he has uh, both of the uh, both versions of Elish Norn, uh, Grand Cenobite and Mother of Machines. Uh, I don't know if I would. I, I, you might want Grand Cenobite in this matchup. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't uh, think I want that any more yeah. than or any more than I would want an Archon of Cruelty, though. So he did end up sacrificing the Asmo because he has another Asmo behind here, Mason does. Here we go. We're starting to make more food. His Archon is going to not be long for this world here. Another cookbook getting added to the hand here. Speaking yeah. of cookbooks, Mason is actually cooking this game. Oh, yeah. Like, that Archon, it's it's kind of like it drew Mason a card. Every time your, your Legendary gets... Gets killed and you have another one in your hand. You're like, I'm so unlocked. Glad you unlocked this. Yeah, <laughs> unlocked. So tons of food going on here, and the speed at which Mason's pulling, you gotta know he he senses the finish line. He can smell it. I don't think I don't think we're gonna cast this this one off the top though. Nah, no. Couldn't say the name of that card if I tried. <laughs> I would I would like after this match for you to try. We've got some time in between the main and the backup. I would like for you to try it one T- time. Tell you what, I'll I'll do a little practice off camera, and okay. then when we have Mason on again, because we're gonna get Mason on camera again okay. at some point in time today, I will attempt to. Uh, do, I made Hal do it yesterday, and I kind of put him on the spot. I guess I'll go around and try to do it as well. Some point at some point, I need. I, just, I, look, just like- I was a hooked on phonics kid. It's gonna be rough. All right, I gotta phonetically go through this. I'm just saying, I like to learn people's names. Every time I'm behind the camera, I'm telling you all what people's names are. I'm just... I'm, you know I'm bad at names, so I just point at like, I'm like that guy. That, that guy over there? Yeah. Him. Her. That person. Mispronouncing people's names on stream drives me crazy. Yeah. I do that a lot. <laughs> That's why we work well together. I don't, we well, complement each other. Yeah, so I don't know if I mispronounce people's names a lot. I just drive you crazy a lot, is what That's, I meant. Yeah. That is very true. Yeah. Uh, speaking of being driven crazy, a D'Anthony... Looks like uh, he is being driven crazy by Mason's by Mason's board state. We have the second creativity, which is great. Uh, but unless D'Anthony has a way to specifically generate treasures, because creatures are not going to survive, 
we're not going to be able to cast this second creativity anytime. Yeah, I was going to say, because there's going to be, I was going to say, is he, is he going to be able to make two food, though, into D'Anthony's turn? So if D'Anthony draws a way to get Dwarven Mine into play, can he get, can he get a creativity off? I have it to is, see. Hold on. There's a say, little, I think, I think he's got one turn. That I was going to say, maybe he has a window here. here, yeah. But it has to be Dwarven Mine. Uh, because any any other creature is going to cost mana to cast, and then he won't be able yep. to cast the creativity. The Striker Rich is already gone, so you don't have yep. that as an out anymore. So it needs to be a fetch land, Dwarven Mine. I think that was a Lightning Let's Bolt. Let's see. What is it? I thought that was a Lightning Bolt. If it is a no. Lightning Bolt, D'Anthony has a little bit of... Oh, it's Brother's War. Brother, the, okay. Oh, Brother. Uh, Brotherhood's End is what we're looking at. That is... Uh, Brotherhood's End. I yeah, apologize. I'm going to say it called Brother's he War. Can, he can de uh, deal three damage to each, cre each creature in each Planeswalker or destroy all artifacts uh, with converted mana cost three or less. Unsurprisingly, goes for creatures in this scenario because both of those creatures are giving him a giant headache. What a top deck by D'Anthony Davis here. Yeah, uh, it, it, it sets him up for the ability to cast creatures and uh, just unlock more options rather than having to get that dwar Dwarven Mine and then put another Archon onto the battlefield that's just going to get killed by Asmo again. Mason is going to have a hell of a reload here, too. We've got a Termogoyf, you got an Urza Saga, I see another Asmo in his hand, and then Opal Chase Del Dare Daredevil. Yeah, he is such a mouthful. I'm going to keep doing its thing and making a ton of food. I don't know, even with that top deck of D&D, is going to be able to get out of this because now the Archons are locked out too. Yeah, and I think, I, I don't know exactly how big these Tarmogoyfs are, but I think uh, the Tarmogoyf plus the uh, Asmo are, are, are lethal here. Um, yeah, I, I think that's going to be lethal damage as well that D'Anthony's facing down. So unless, barring some massive top deck here, I think D'Anthony's going to be taking his first loss of the day, of the tournament. And, and there we go. Yep. So Mason's going to move up to... Eight zero and one, and D'Anthony Davis is going to fall to eight and one. Are we have no more pure undefeated players yep. in this tournament? And you know nine zero oh, and one, the polar opposite of O three drop. I think. Yeah, I mean, it, I I don't think you could get more different. Uh, ten zero, oh. ten zero, oh, or yeah, ten zero. Oh. oh, is ten higher than nine? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, we've got we've got to the top of my range here. I can't go further than ten zero. Oh. If you go to eleven zero, oh, I can't all actually. The fingers you have. I've got well, all, you have a I'm microphone not. in your hand. You can get to eleven now. <sighs> yeah, I guess you're right. You always are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, yeah we've got our backup match it sounds like yep let's go ahead and make some more magic here this uh this yeah, round we gotta we'll say, i think we have yes with a jarek who we had very early in day one we saw him get kind of obliterated by an esper reanimator deck in this format he died on practically turn two in one of the game. yeah but it's the only loss of the tournament for him so far so he is seven one nice little rally I think I talked about this when he was on the stream, too. I've watched Garrick play quite a bit over the years. He is one hell of a magician. And we got Jacob Dunlap playing Mono White Hammer. This one also at 7-1. and one. Uh, Also a good player, too, by the way. I've, I've watched Jacob play a few games in my day, and a pretty good magician as well. Well, if you're talking about, like, we watched Garrick's weakness earlier, uh dying on turn two you want to talk about decks that could kill you on turn two how about mono white hammer why don't you yep. walk me through that deck Tana? so it's going to play a hammer and then it's going to put it on a creature and it's going to attack you with it it's going to say bonk yeah and what happens when that creature is an ink moth nexus they die immediately yeah. so that's the way yeah that's one of the ways that you can kill someone really really early there is ink moth nexus uh that has you know does do poison counters and if you use the hammer correctly it will do that you could also kill through normal damage which is a little more common with this deck but they do have that option with ink moth nexus it's less flashy yeah i mean here's the thing it's less flashy but i can't tell you how many times i've seen people killed by ornithopter Oh, yeah. yeah. 10 12 it, on a top here. Doesn't Attack matter you. that that card doesn't have flying anymore. Yep. It is just going to bash you. Uh, you speaking of, of, of Ink Moth Nexus, we, uh, I heard some conversations in the back room before uh, about your opinion on dealing one with Ink Moth Nexus. Do you, do you, are, you, are, you, are you ever on the one plan or is it just 10 or zero? Uh, I'm okay with the one. I mean, I've, I was a player. I had to play against Affinity a lot growing up, so I used to getting the chip, have the chip damage come in against me. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of blocking with it and doing the tricks with it as well. Oh yeah, that's always yeah. fun. But, yeah, give, giving giving Ink Moth Nexus a little little extra power. A little extra boost. Yeah. Yeah, when things have things have buffs and you put minus one minus one counters on them, it does not matter at the end of the turn. It's absolutely. Still Let's see. Okay, so on on Jacob Dunlap's side, we do have uh, we do have a an Urza Saga. 
what do you think Jacob wants to get when that gets up to uh, three, uh, well, three lore counts? With Sigarda's aid being in play, I think he's just going to go after his name set card. He's going to most likely be going after Hammer mm -hmm. to get into play since Sigarda's aid is going to be able to allow it to attach to a creature a lot easier because the, the main problem with Colossal, with the card that he just drew this turn, the main problem with that card is it's very hard to equip to a creature the normal way. It's eight mana it's it's something like it's not it's eight I, mana i've never seen it actually happen i've never seen anyone equip from the actual ability of I have hammer to, I have to look at card text a lot like to look at pictures of cards a lot sure. uh so if i'm and now that i've said that if i'm wrong i'm gonna look absolutely stupid when mm -hmm. uh when it gets pulled up on the screen by honor uh but um let's see yeah like it's it is eight honor rock says it's eight so i'm right again uh, but uh, it costs zero with Sigarda's Aid, from from what I heard. Yeah, Sigarda's Aid does allow you to get around. It starts to attach things to other creatures. So that's one of the big plays that this deck can do. And Back over to Garrick. We've got this Teferi going up to two here after bouncing one of the uh, Giver of Runes that Jacob had in play. Now, Jacob didn't redeploy in any turn. So let's see what kind of uh, tricks he's got up his sleeve for Garrick here. And... We were talking before about that Ink Moth Nexus. Jacob has an Ink Moth Nexus on the battlefield. Uh, he's got a cigar to his aid, so he can play the Colossus uh, Hammer from hand. Yeah, and so uh, we see Garrick here, I was going to say, he was going to tap out for something which would normally signal shields down, but for one thing, this is the one ring, so he's not going to be able to take any damage. He's going to have protection from everything this turn. Also, yep. it's a little difficult in today's modern when your opponent taps out to just go for something like this because... They probably just have some elemental in their hand that they can convoke for free. Do you have to play around that as well? So it's not yeah. traditionally like it's been in the history of Magic where, oh, you're tapped out. What are you at? Okay, you're dead. Yeah, game game one is. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's still a little scary because they could uh, they could have solitude, uh, and that that completely ruins your day. It is also much more scary in a tournament like this. We're used to doing a lot of tournaments where deck lists are open, but this is a closed deck list tournament. Absolutely, which I think has been helping some of these, um, you know, less than normal quote-unquote decks here in modern you know like the asmo food deck i think he's been getting a lot of uh extra percentage points in his matchups because you know his opponents don't know his range they don't know all the cards in his deck he's got a completely different kind of deck that most people have seen and you don't know you know you're not ready for some of these cards you weren't ready for breakout and some of these things to happen right and uh like when you're when you're playing in an open deck list tournament you see what your opponent's playing. You kind of know what to expect. You can see your hand. You're like, oh, this is, you know, this hand kind of kind of sucks against this deck. I'll go to six. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Can't do that here. Yeah, yeah. You uh, there. There's so many times you just your your opponent uh, just plays uh, the Underworld Cookbook on turn one. You're like, oh, oh okay. Well, I have no idea what's going on. Like. Yeah. <laughs> now, Garrick might have protection from everything, but Teferi does not. So that Carnage's gonna. Rumble on over there and take care of that Planeswalker. Jacob built up a, quite a board here from nothing. Here's a Saga, makes a Karnstruct, a second one when we get to untap, and then we've got a Giver of Runes into play here too. This would be a great spot for Garrick to have a Sweeper out of his Asorius Control deck. Let's see if he's up for the task. If he doesn't have a Sweeper, it is looking pretty... Oh, yeah, this uh, this Prismatic Ending is, is showing that there is... There's no Sweepers. Um, Jacob, it looks like the, the, the coast may be clear for Jacob, especially with this Giver of Runes. Uh, we don't have to be quite so worried about the the things like, like Solitude anymore. Uh, Garrick could always have multiple instant answers, but... I was going to say, this is a pretty good answer here, since he got to kill the Pithing Needle, and which was locked on the, uh, the One Ring. Mm -hmm. One Ring gets to be unlocked. Now he gets to draw two cards off of it. He's going to fetch to get another a fourth mana into play and play a second one ring here. So he's going to reset that as well and give himself protection yet again. So time walking Jacob yet again here this turn. Is protection from everything good against a deck that is trying to kill you in one turn? Yes. It is. It is good. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it does like protection. Protection is is is, is damage. Uh, you can't be enchanted, uh, which. We're just gonna go down the line. He's gonna go down the line of everything. Okay. I was like ready. I was like the joke. I was about to start. I was about to start the check. The uh the checklist. I was like, what are we missing? Okay. Okay. We got that one. All right. Damage enchant uh block and. I I, no idea. I just know I can't attack my opponent. Yeah, I just can't. Well, you can attack them. You can't block your opponent. You can't. You can attack them, but like nothing happens. 
Uh, and yeah, it looks like uh, Garrick's Garrick's got a full grip, and the uh, the grip is only going to get bigger. Like this preordain's cool, uh, but that I think that one ring is going to draw a couple more cards. And it looks like he just drew a, a Days Undoing and and has Narset in hand. Yeah, I think I see two Narset, a Subtlety, a Counter Spell, a Solitude, and more left over to hand. And then we're going to draw two more. That's Manamo and Prismatic Ending yep. as well. Garrick is. I think he's in a great spot. I think it's land, land all the way left. I think that's a triome and maybe a flooded strand. You say you say and more, but and more is kind of the name of the game when you have the one ring on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean he's never gonna run out of cards yeah, here. It is it is it is the definition of I still had all these. Yep. Uh, and but why don't, why don't you? Because I know I know he did it yesterday, but uh, we might have a new audience today. How does Days Undoing? interact with narset is is oh is yeah sure that you end the turn when that card is done being so fixed? it's bad that you in the turn but you're completely okay with it because um days undoing especially if you like you're a commander player it's like a wheel effect i'm not a commander player well, so you know we have a lot of commander players in the room but it's it's like a wheel effect meaning both players are going to draw seven but there's a hitch in the plan what is that hitch <laughs> well if you have this planeswalker in play called narset your opponent is not allowed to draw extra cards during their turn so if you do it during your turn, they get one of the seven, oh. not all seven. If you do it during their turn, which you can, you can do because you have to ferry your deck, giving your sorceries and yep. speed, then they draw zero off of Days Undoing. And, and by the way, end of the turn. Yep. During your draw step, how about I draw seven, you draw zero. And your turn's end over. End of the turn. Yeah. One of my favorite cards of all time was a time stop when they, they took away the reminder text. It just says end of the turn. Yeah. And that's all it says in the Very tech box. Good. And they centered it. Make me any less or more likely to cast that card, I will always want to cast a time stop. I'm a time stop fan. Sure. Uh, what do you think about the uh, about the times the time stop that costs less on your turn? Discon discontinuity. 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 I couldn't yeah. remember what the name of the card was. Yeah, that one. Uh, not as much of a fan as I am of this version of Azorius Control. If I was going to play Blue Eye Control, I would definitely give the days. The, uh, the Days Undoing version, like this one that Garrick's playing, yeah. a run for its money, just to make sure, you know, do I want to be pure control or do I want to have this combo-esque, you know, powerful play in my deck? Because it's so good in certain matchups. Yeah, and I, I mean, Jacob, I mean, we're having this little side conversation, but Jacob is reminding us that we are not quite in garbage time uh, attacking with two constructs uh, that look like they are currently three threes could always get a little bit bigger by animating that ink pop nexus. I like how you call them the correct name. You call them constructs. I call them constructs. Constructs. Yeah. It was one of the first times we ever got this. This type, because this is very common now. The, yes. the, the artifact creature that gets plus plus one for all the artifacts to play. The first time we got it was off of Karn. And so everybody called it the constructs and stuff. So I'm just so used to using that vernacular for it, but yeah, well, sometimes things get new names, and we yeah. need to we need to appreciate those new names, Tannen. Yeah, I, look, no problem with that. Now, Garrick's gonna go down to three here off this one ring. So now there's a couple problems, right? He's got to deal with the creatures that are in play from Jacob. There's a Urza Saga at two. It's gonna go to three next turn. There is an Inkmoth Nexus in play with that Sigardas Age just chilling there, and Garrick has to deal with all of this. Has to not have his ring be there anymore. Yep. During his next upkeep and has to somehow stop all the stuff and then not die as well. Now, the first step, draw four new cards. That's going to help a lot. Very good. Okay. We picked up a Prismatic Ending. That's huge. We picked up a Teferi. That's huge. We have a ton of mana left over. We also have a Subtlety for if you, you're able to deal with everything, deal with your own ring, you're going to be able to have this left over. So let's, let's talk yes. this through. There's, so we can get the Teferi. Yeah, we can get the Teferi into play, bounce our own ring, draw another card. We can use a Prismatic Ending to kill one of the, car, uh, the Constructs. Okay, okay, so we're gonna oh, okay, we're gonna, like he drew it out. Yeah, we're gonna start here because this gives us the most information. So we're gonna do this. I assume we're gonna bounce the one ring. Uh, if he, yep. yep. We, All right, okay, so we bounce the one bounce. ring. Yep. And um, well, here's the other thing too. Because he can just say, give himself protection. Again. I was gonna say if he if he hasn't played a land for the turn, he can just play. That's what, there we go. There's a land. A Gaia Reach Sanitarium, a nice one that combos really well with Narset as well. Yes. Uh, for everybody at home. You discard. Yep. Very exactly. Good. And so it looks like we're going to have another one ring here to give protection. And this gives Garrick a lot more flexibility over the next turn. He doesn't move right. all in here. He's got another uh, protection up. He's got Teferi's protection for you, uh, commander players, to get it, it home. Is, well, he has, yeah, Teferi gave him protection. So there I guess go. it is quite yeah. literally Teferi's that's, protection. That's where I was going with this. I wasn't, I wasn't naming a magic card, was I? 
Uh, it, it does, in a way, time walk him. Uh, he time walks himself, but it does very clearly deal with the two threats that are directly uh, directly facing him. The, uh, the uh, Jacob's creatures on the other side and uh, his own mana crypt that will always uh, roll tails yeah. on his side. Yeah. So uh, this is a this is a either a fun spot for you or not. But as David would say, this is where one player gets all of the fun because Garrick right now, he's got what, 14 cards in his hand. Yeah, I think he just pitched six maybe 13 cards in so he had to pitch six or seven cards at the end of the turn and you see jacob kind of pull back a little bit he sees the cards that he pitches there's two narsets in there a counter spell so like look man if you're pitching counter spell like what do you I, have? I might be yeah like th this might be enough for me yeah i don't blame jacob for playing it out though here these card trucks are absolutely massive we'll see what he's going to get with his urza saga here i mean jacob is showing us you know fun fun is not zero sum he's going to have as much fun as he's allowed to have uh, during this turn in which he uh, he cannot get uh, Garrick's life total down this year. I'm glad you said it that way. He's going to have his fun. It's it's how much he's allowed to have. Because I feel like Garrick is the arbiter of fun here in this game and in this match with the way that this is playing out. Well, Jacob is currently allowed to have any fun that he wants because Garrick's tapped out. Uh, as long as that fun does not include killing Garrick. Yep. Well, with the protection from the ring setup, that's going to be nice. He's also got at least one uh, pitch elemental in his hand. I think he might have subtlety as well Ooh. like he's got multiple i believe just in case just kind of covering all the base i don't know if he pitched one at the end of his turn there i can't uh, make out every so. single I card see, I see a counter spell i see two narsets i see yep a there is a subtlety lands. okay yeah yeah we've got subtlety we've got solitude can we fan it out again not fast enough okay to see it we've also got a supreme verdict in the hand as well okay all right so this teferi is going to bite the dust yeah yeah, because uh, the ring does not give to fairy protection. Right, you can still attack the planeswalkers, but even coming in, even coming with multiple, wanting to gain some life off the uh, off off the shadow spear while possible, um, and just making sure that subtlety does not protect that to fairy. Yep, James add another creature to the board here. This is Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, it's going to search up something. I think he already has the shadow spear in his hand from the Urza Saga this turn, so. Maybe a extra copy of Hammer here is going to be added to Jacob's hand unless he has a surprise. That oh, there we go. Complete. That one's a pretty good yeah. one too. Love that. The the batter skull replacement. Love that card. Uh, I don't. Do you think Cauldre Complete is going to make an impact in this match, or do you think Jacob is just searching it up because we've gone down the yeah. list of things and this is the last one on the list? Yeah, it's very likely he's just getting it out of his deck to thin here. I don't know if Cauldre Complete is going to be actually happening this game because yeah. I doubt he's going to ever have a Stoneforge Mystic in play with the ability to activate. Especially and then, with that Supreme Verdict. Yeah, I don't know if he'll get up to seven mana. He might in this game, but at some point in time, he might just concede to Garrick. We'll see. Uh, do you think Garrick is going to draw any more cards off of that uh, off of that one ring for he, the rest of the game? If he does, I think that means that he's either A, dead, or Jacob's dead. If you see the ring get activated, he's either a last-ditch effort or he's so far ahead it doesn't matter yeah, we, we just want to look at one more and make sure that we're, we're killing you in the most efficient way possible. Yeah, he has a way to... He he has a, an, a the other ring to play again this turn. He has a Teferi with no other good targets, so he'll bounce his own ring. Yeah, there's... If that ring gets activated, the, the game is ending one way or the there other. Is, there is no, Garrick's not even taking one off of that ring. Right. Or maybe he'll take one, like one, one time. Like it won't, it won't happen the second time. We'll go turn. down to two? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that a Sanctifier Invec, I think? That is, that is. I, my, uh, unfortunately my laptop just died, so I don't have the, uh, I don't have the deck list up. That's not good. Yeah, I was wondering why my earpiece went down. Uh, he do, does have does have one of those main deck. Uh, we're getting confirmation from the booth. Yep, Shadow Spear attached to that. And just a pass from Garrick, but as we know, tons and tons of stuff left over his hand. Lots of flash creatures. Looks like maybe a copy of Counterspell. Yeah, there's a copy of Counterspell all the way to the left there, right next to that Narset. The Narset's a white border. It's really nice of him to have that so I could pick him out of his hand a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are some other white border cards, but uh, knowing that that one is a Planeswalker every time, uh, knowing that's a play, that's always going to be Planeswalker, either Narset or Teferi, uh, really really helps us out over here. And this this might be a way where you might see the ring get activated a little bit here. The Solitude just got hard cast here, and if this gets to start attacking and hitting Jacob, that lifelink's going to go a long way of getting Garrick's life total to be relevant. Yeah, yeah, the, the lifelink on that card. You know, I'm going to cast this. I'm going to get rid of your creature. You're going to gain some life. That's great. You know, it gives life to both of us. It's it's fair, balanced, equal. We both get exactly the same amount of life yep. every turn. Yeah, Dark Soul Paladin got met with that counterspell there.
Derek, kind of like getting a little low on cards here now, but we still have that ever-present combo looming. Yep. You're just going to make, make sure that he can do it in a spot where he feels very, very comfortable from that, too. Yeah, and um, I mean, this another thing that this, uh, this Solitude does is, uh, Jacob, you could see Jacob had this game plan of, hey, look, you're at three. Every creature I play is lethal. Every every threat I present is lethal. I'm just going to make you deal with it one at a time. So that way, if you have another Supreme Verdict, some way to deal with multiple creatures at a time, you got to use that. All right, here. I think we're actually going to start is go for it. There's a Narset that's been added to play. Prismatic. Doing? Yeah, Prismatic Ending is going to go ahead and pick off that Cigar to Zay, So no instant speech shenanigans that happen. Once that's resolved now, Days Undoing is going to happen. The turn is now ended. Here we go. Here comes the fun. Yeah, except we're going to Time Twister now, but yep. it's not... It's not a full time Come twister on. for both he players. He gets one. He, okay, you're right. He, he gets, gets one. He gets he a gets card. A card. So that Calder, this, this is the other reason I thought about that Calder's complete. That's back in the deck now. Uh, it, ugh, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that at all. We <laughs> no, searched that out of the deck no, for a reason. No, no drawing, drawing a Calder complete right now would be disastrous. I will say, really? it looks like we might get a little peek at the seven. I see a counter spell. A Lorian revealed another Teferi, a preordain, a prismatic in it. Oh, the world is Garrick's oyster here. Yeah, I, I'm. You you can even kind of see it on Jacob's face. Yeah. He is he's trying to figure out uh, if there is a path to victory. Uh, but oh, we're get, are we getting a little a little help? Yeah, it looks like the Moth Nexus is going to pick up a Shadow Spear. The other one's going to yeah. get into the red zone as well. So three infect. We've got yeah, on the side of Garrick. Three, three poison damage, and that poison damage does not care about Solitude. Absolutely not. So that is going to be the the path for victory for Jacob here because the Solitude is about to hit him again. And I think we might see the Ring actually possibly activate at some point in time here. Don't forget, there's also Gyre Reach Sanitarium yep. in play with that Narset. Oh, so yeah. lots of stuff for Garrick to do here from this spot. Yeah, I, it it basically. Uh, I believe that, that that comes very close to uh, to locking him out. You, uh, G uh, Jacob, draws a card on the turn. You Gaia Reach. Mm -hmm. Like, can you cast it now? Yeah, if you, you can do it in the draw step, which yeah. is really really brutal because Jacob's not gonna have many spells that he can play at instant speed. Yeah, I don't. Is instant speed discard good? Yeah, they they quit printing that in, in Magic. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. Jacob Jacob looks hard locked here. Uh, actual hard locked, uh, except for uh, possibly those Ink Moth Nexuses. Um, is, it, is it Nexuses or is it Nexi? Nexies. Nexies. I like Nexies. Nexies sounds Nexies. better. Nexies. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, we talked about this earlier. Look, I'm gonna pull up chat so I can I can see it. We, we we had what what was the name of a group of Archons? What is the name of a group of Nexies? Like, what would you Nex call it? Nexus. Ne yeah. Of of Ink Moth Nexus. Like you're getting Hold attacked on. by multiple. Nexus is, 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 is what what is it called? Uh, I mean, and, I mean, look at this. He is Jacob is hard locked in this game and is still uh, dealt half the amount of poison damage to to Garrick to end this game. Like, uh, I, I I love I love that Jacob is seeing the very very small hole in the needle that he has to thread mm -hmm. uh, to to find some way of getting this match. Even if he has a 1% chance of winning this game, he is not scooping up those cards. Yeah. I would have scooped up a long time ago because I want to make it time for games two and three. Yeah, I'm say the Kahira, look, when the Kahira makes an appearance, uh, you know, there's something to be said about it. Yeah. Well, Subtlety is going to get played here. It's going to be able to block one of these Zinc Uh One of the answers that we've got is a gaggle, a gaggle of Nexuses. Hey, I don't like, I, I, I just hate that word in general. Listen, that one's uh that one's already used too, right? For a group of uh, animals, I think uh, it's geese. A ga yeah, a gaggle of geese. We're yeah. getting eclipse of moths from the uh, from the back room. Okay, uh, uh, Anu is telling me that that the uh, plural for moths is eclipse. Okay, That's a good one. That's a very good one. Someone said a convergence. I'm gonna go with an eclipse of ink moths. You know, maybe I, the multiple the, because it's really it's not the nexus that's attacking you. It is the ink moth. Sure, sure. I will say, uh, as Jacob here scoops up, he's finally had enough. Jacob scoops up game one here. We're gonna be going into game two. Uh, as I, I remember looking it up once. There's actually a term for a group of dragons, which I think it might be a brood. I, I, I remember that, but myth in like there i think there's also one for unicorns. So even mythical creatures have names for groupings. English yeah. Oh, someone said, okay, so they're ink moths. They're ink moths. With, right, right. So 
So they're called a lamp. I hate that. <laughs> I, I hate that. <laughs> uh, so, um, doing your job for you, uh, sure. I'm going to look at the sideboards. Okay. Um, so it looks like from Jacob, we have three Cursed Totem, three Solitude, two Dranith Magistrate, two Sanctifier Envec, two Hollowed Moonlight, two March of Otherworldly Light, one Relic of Progenitus. On Garrick's side, we have three Stern Scolding, two Dovin's Veto, two Force of Negation, two Subtlety, uh, Chalice of the Void, Kahira, uh, Ray of Revelation, another Supreme Verdict, a Dress Down, and a Rest in Peace. Uh, let's see. If you are on Garrick's side, what are you thinking here? Oh, the draw don't hate Stern Scolding. Being able to answer some of these early creatures like Stoneforge and Dark Soul Paladin on turn one. Mm hmm. Um, I think it matters exactly what he wants to bring out. Like, how much of the combo do you still want to do? You want to turn into pretty much just a pure blue white uh, control deck, right. or if you just want to kind of play the same game that you did game one? Because I actually really like a lot of his main deck against. Yeah, I was. Ever. I was thinking the same thing. We're uh, we're coming back into the match. Uh, it seems like, like uh, like we were saying in game one, Garrick's big, uh, Garrick's big uh, weakness is dying on turn two. If he doesn't die on turn two, like pretty much any other control deck, looks. I think I think he's in pretty good shape uh, just with his main deck. But this, okay, I was gonna say this Esper Sentinel, a great way to help deal with the Zorius yep. control, but immediately answered by that prismatic ending. Yeah, great uh, answer here for Garrick because that was one of Jacob's real power plays early in the game. Esper Sentinel, Sentinel, just putting that little extra tax on everything that he has to do. Otherwise, Jacob gets extra cards here. Really, really good tool for the mono white hammer deck to keep up with the Zorus control player. Now, nothing here on turn three, but that doesn't mean too many bad things here for Jacob. A couple things he can do, plus he's got the Urza Saga in play. Yeah, and I mean, it's this this game two is functioning very similar to the game one for, for Jacob, uh, especially presenting that Esper Sentinel uh, that Garrick has to deal with. That now means that Prismatic Ending is not on the battlefield for Cigar to save. Yeah, absolutely. So, or, sorry, it's not in his hand for Cigar to Zade. Uh, so uh, how do you think, especially with uh, with Jacob being able to be on the play, what does it look like so far? To ignore that. Uh, I think there's two solitudes in Jarek's hand. Let's 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 gloss over that. Going in. That's blind. that's the hardest thing is I was, I was thinking about this from Jacob's side is like you could have one of your super aggressive, really good early draws. The problem is, even if Garrick is untapped, there's always a threat of he just pitches a card to an elemental and blows you out from, you know, you putting a hammer onto one of your creature creatures. And now almost everything that you've done, it's, it's, it feels almost like a two for five in the matchup because everything that you've done kind of just falls away. Yep. And, uh, okay. We're animating the ink moth next. I, I think Jacob has found the exact game plan that gets him completely destroyed. We'll have to see here, but uh, let's see what he's going to get off of the Urza Saga, maybe he's got a little bit of a surprise here for us. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like a hammer. Unsurprised. Yeah, unsurprised. He's going to go for it. And look, you got to slug through it. I mean, if you know your opponent has interaction, like it's going to be there for the rest of the game. So yep. at some point, I mean, you have to play into it. And that's what we see here. Jacob's going to go ahead, put the hammer on the Ink Moth Nexus. And if Garrick didn't have an answer here, he'd be dead. It would, yeah, it'd just be, oh, and, and it's, it is the hard cast subtlety, which is even worse uh that just completely de decimates uh jacob's board um you know maybe maybe uh one day we will get to the eight mana to, well yeah well hold, hold. so there's gonna be a march of other relay Ooh. this is gonna take care of the subtlety does garrett not have another white card no he's got two he's got two solitude in his hand. okay he's got two solitude. we're gonna pitch a solitude to cast another solitude uh which which is a supreme help. verdict as well but yeah this is gonna go ahead and take care pitching? of the well, nexus it looks like Maybe he's gonna pitch verdict. that supreme verdict keep that second solitude in the hand i like that yep uh i bet because i believe that garrick has a ring as well he so you're gonna be able to play ring here and yeah. keep solitude up for the next turn as well i like i like what happened here we got uh in modern we kind of got the the force pitch force force pitch force thing mm -hmm. that we were that we want to see except it was like all white cards and then, and then wasteland you because there's only one land on one side of right. where there's four that this this does feel like a legacy this game exactly actually exactly what i want to yeah. be casting right <laughs> i knew i knew i picked a good one to sit on the yeah you did for. All right, Lorien Revealed is going to do its thing. Going to go ahead and find a island card yep. for Garrick. It's just going to go ahead and get a basic island. Yeah, it, it, uh, Garrick didn't have any lands in his hand, so that, that island cycling, effectively free. Yep. 
Phase herself gets to play the land for the turn. Go ahead and draw the card immediately off the one ring, and Garrick is protected for this turn as well. Hell of a card, the one ring. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's very good. So people people talk about not liking the card, but could you imagine the Magic the Gathering embodiment of the one ring being any less powerful? No, I think they kind of hit it on the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe, I think maybe, they nailed maybe it. Maybe should have cost like five mana instead of four. But sure. uh, the, the the text on the card, uh, exactly what I expect from the one ring. And here we go. We got another March Roller Rally pitching two cards here. And Jacob is out of cards for his hand. You, you see a little bit of a smile for both the players. He's like, look, I have to do this. Yep. It's not great, but this is what, ha what has to happen. He has to answer the ring because with Garrick at 15, and his only way to really attack him being this card trick that you assume isn't going to happen. You can't let Garrick have 15 life in a ring and play for multiple turns. You'll never oh, no. win from that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, even even drawing one card and getting protection for a turn gives gives Garrick so much breathing room. If you ever let someone untap with the one ring and you don't have one yourself, uh, it's the, the game is like you you lose easily 20, 30 percentage points on that game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but we may not have a one rank, but we're still finding a way to draw three cards on our turn. Well, one of my favorite plays, hard cast Lorian revealed. Absolute love that. We're going to get some damage in from Jacob over here. That's an Esper Sentinel adding a little bit more power to the board. That card truck's going to go ahead and get on over and get some damage in. Garrick down to 12, but he's got so many cards in his hand. I don't think he's too worried. There's at least one more uh, elemental in his hand, all kinds of things that he's got going on. Yeah. We'll see. Here we go. I think you're going to see it here. It's going to eat. The construct with the ability to be able to block the Esper Sentinel here as well. This is going to be yet another two for one here uh, in this game. Very rough. Yeah, you say you say it adds adds a little more power. I'm sure Jacob would have liked that Esper Sentinel to uh, have a lot more power, uh, even because even without you know seeing the second Solitude, mm. uh, being able to force Garrick into not being able to pay the mana just so we can draw yeah. a couple extra cards. And this is a nightmare for Jacob here. He got to attack with two creatures. But and they look, one of the stern scoldings came in. Just like, yep. he oh, so unfortunately threw that card at Jacob. Yeah, and cast it faster. Yeah, I mean this, this game, everything's over, but just the actual cleanup. And it, it's really rough when you attack your opponent with two creatures, and instead mm -hmm. of getting damage in, they actually end that turn at a higher life total than they started with, and you have no creatures left over. That is an absolute nightmare from a creature deck. It You're still paladin off the top. The uh, opposite of what you want to be doing. In combat. Yeah. <laughs> and all that's left over here is the cleanup for Garrick. He is in a commanding position. You might see that 30 life total over from Jacob, but at some point in time, Jacob's going to be saying, yeah, I've, I've had enough. Yeah, even the pure steel paladin, great on pretty much any other board, uh, but not having metal craft to get around yeah. that eight mana equip on the hammer. It's... Was the last time you saw Pierce of Paladin not able to equip anything? It's been a while for it's me. It's been a very long time. Yeah. And these creatures are actually outsizing it quite a bit here. You know, Kahira pumping up Solitude. It's quite nice. So tons of damage going to get across for Garrick here. He's gonna, I think he's going to be back up over 20 finally here as well, which is unreal. Yeah, and you know you're in a good spot when you're looking at all the cards in your hand. You're looking at your opponent's side of the board, and you're like, actually... I'm just going to spend six mana to cast my command or to my, not my commander, my companion uh, instead. Like it's, you know, you know, you're in a very good spot when you are willing to just spend six mana to put a three, two on board. Yeah. Presenting ending there, taking care of the creature for Jacob. Going to be followed up by chalice for one here, locking out half of Jacob's deck. Ooh. And here comes another attack from gear here. They're doing the math because it has to go both ways. Garrick's going up. Jacob's going down. And I got to think Jacob's going to the rail here soon. Garrick in a commanding spot here with this blue-white deck. Here we go. We watched the life totals tick down. Looks like Jacob is down to 16. Uh, that is a three-turn clock so far, it looks like. So, uh, but I think I think we're going to power through these three turns in, in, in a matter of minutes. Yep, just keep the status quo. Make land drops, draw a few extra cards, attack you with my two creatures, say go. Seven, seven you, seven you, seven you. Yep. Shake hands. That's yeah. it. There's a Teferi. It's going to help lock up this game just a little bit more. Now the sorcery is going to be played at instant speed if that needs to be done. And Jacob is all but locked up out of this game. You can even yep. you can tell by Jerk's boss. There we yep. go. There's the handshake. And look, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I love a lot of the players we've seen here. I'm, I'm great friends of uh, D'Anthony Davis that we've seen earlier. I'm going to call it. I, 
I've got Garrick as winning this tournament. You got Garrick as winning this winning I, this I tournament? think Garrick is going to be putting his name on the trophy this weekend as the winner. I'm calling I, it. You know, I, I, not that I, not that I doubt you, mm -hmm. but I just, I want to know your thoughts behind that. Like, what, what got you to that decision? So I've watched, I've known him for years and years. I think he's a great player. I was watching him play this weekend. Uh, he's playing great. I like his deck choice in this room. I think he's got answers to absolutely everything. And then I think it's just play skill. Like I've watched him, he's amazing. And then he has that air of confidence about him that like, I don't know, you just get that sense that like no one's going to stop him this weekend. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that match, he really did put on a clinic. To Absolutely. Just like show, I don't care that your deck can kill me quickly. I have answers. I have all of these spells I can cast for free. Sometimes, sometimes I don't need to cast them for free. Sometimes I just pay full mana for them. And now you have to deal with my answer and the threat that it presents uh, aside from that. Yeah. But I, I mean, it, Gary, uh, Garrick's at uh, eight and one now, eight and one. which is very good. But also, also uh, seven and two, very impressive mm -hmm. record. We have like, uh, I think it was 350 people playing uh, 13 rounds. Yep. X and two, I think is, is going to be perfectly fine for top eight. Yeah, he's only going to win a few more rounds that he's in. So like my heart is saying D'Anthony Davis is going to win the thing. Okay. But after watching a few rounds of him play, talking to him in between rounds, there's that quiet, he's got that quiet confidence. I'm, I'm picking Garrick to win the whole thing. Picking Garrick? Yeah. Cool. All right, I think that's going to be it for this round. Uh, we're going to be right back with more Magic, so don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with the Hunter Burton Memorial Open. See you soon.